All righty. Well, here's our introduction. Uh, what you see is exactly what it's doing right now. Uh, the air curtain burner is burning as we speak. Uh, I didn't check the weather yet. Uh, an hour or two ago, it was 88 degrees, I think. Uh, a couple of days ago, we were burning at 98 degrees. And right there in that picture, the air curtain is uh, burning. Uh, so you can see there's no smoke. Uh, quickly, the air, curter, uh, the air curtain burner was is on loan from the Humboldt Del Norte unit. Uh, we picked it up in Paradise. Uh, Cal Fire has a, a fleet of these, I want to say seven to nine air curtain burners. They originally were purchased for treating all the uh, tree mortality in the Sierras. And then two were brought up north here uh, to Paradise for the campfire cleanup. And at, uh, at that time, uh, when they were done using them, uh, the Cal Fire uh, Humboldt Del Norte unit um, offered to loan us this one that we picked up in Paradise. And so we picked this up uh, early May, and, and we've been utilizing it ever since, uh, burning landing piles from the first 48 in the Kelsey Peak timber sale areas uh, immediately adjacent to the Ruth community. Okay, we can go to the next one. Okay, so well basically, um, the point of the air burner is right. We want to we want to get complete combustion as close as possible, um, and and reduce the smoke particulate matter, uh, basically the pollution created by open pile burning. Um, and so the principle basically in this box, it's a large box, is. Uh, we, we, with a, via an excavator, we, we put piled material in there and uh, there's a large, there's a lot, there's air that comes out of the manifold and it creates the curtain. So air from one side of the box flows, hits the opposite side of the box and circulates underneath the fuel. So, you know, you've got enriched oxygen going through the box and as it heats up, uh, the air flowing over the top essentially creates a curtain and traps the particulate matter. And if you'll notice here, um, what's interesting is the, the heat waves, actually what looks like heat waves are really small particulate matter. So again, um, we've had people hand pile burning right next to this and they put up all kinds of smoke and you wouldn't even know we're burning. So. It's, it's very effective. Okay, next. Again, here's the, the principle. Um, you see the air burner number one, that's the manifold. And there's a series of small holes where the air uh, through a fan uh, runs through and hits the top of the the box there and then starts circulating over the fuel, the material. Uh, to start this, we put a lot of small, like one 10 hour fuels in there, ignited with a drip torch first thing in the morning. Usually there's always ash in there that's, that's very hot, um, a lot of coals. When we retrieved this from Paradise, they hadn't used it in a month and there were still coals sitting at the bottom. Um, and I want to remind everybody, the bottom of this uh, box is bottomless. There is none. It's just the, the ground. So it makes it, you know, kind of unique. And to clean this out, the ash, um, you can get a rake or we just roll it over the top of a log and the, and the ash deposits. Okay, next. Okay, so I thought uh, 
we might want to look at options. I know that members of the collaborative uh, have been interested in possibly wanting to to get one of these. Um, the the one on the left, what I'm calling a semi-stationary firebox. There, uh, what what I've told the collaborative, if anybody's interested, uh, they could petition the Shasta Trinity Cal Fire Unit in Reading. Um, and there may be another one available to bring over to um, the Weaverville area. And so uh, the, what we're calling the semi, I'm calling it a semi-stationary firebox. It's on skids. Um, and so if you look there in the front, you can see the fan that runs this. Uh, it's just a little three-cylinder Kubota engine. Um, they're designed around, this one's just over 49 horsepower, but most of them are uh, under 49 horsepower. And uh, it's just a giant fan running air through that series of holes in the manifold that you see on the left of your, you know, the machine there. And so again, the, the advantage of this one, it burns large material. Um, we put everything in it, large logs, small slash, small root balls, uh, great consumption. Um, because we didn't have a burn plan for the timber sale, uh, we, we brought the piles to, to the burner. But if we were, if we had an active burn plan, we would actually um, be able to pull this on its skids uh, with our dozer using a, a big strap, put it to the front and just pull it from landing to landing. Um, if you look down there, the beauty of this is it's got high mass reduction. Um, so if you look there at the example, 100 tons of wood will yield you two to four tons of ash or biochar. So very clean burning. Um, but again, moving it is the challenge. Um, you need the low bed trailer, a dozer, or at least a medium sized excavator to get it loaded and rolled up on top of a low bed and then to uh, remove it from the low bed. So, you know, it's a little more spendy in that sense. Um, and again, we're using a small excavator to load the material into this. We've got a dump truck. Um, our timber sales are uh, within a mile to, you know, we're taking material within a mile to three miles of where this is located, which is at the Roost Guard Station. So, um, it seems fairly efficient. We've already burned uh, probably 69 acres since we've re since we've got this. Um, in the next one, uh, if you look to your right, the trailer mounted the burn box. Uh, this is um, this one kind of captures a lot of people's attention. You can pull this with a pickup truck, um, and it's got the same principle as. Uh, the larger uh, semi-stationary one, the S220, um, the box will lower and um, you can load material by hand. Um, I often thought it'd be great to run around neighborhoods, you know, if you had a place, um, you know, where you had a gravel road or something where you could put it and just burn material there, or people could come and, um, It'd be great like at our, you know, all of our county dump sites where people could, you know, put their yard material and stuff in. Um, it's reasonably uh, inexpensive, uh, inexpensive $53,000. Um, and it's, a, it's probably one of the more popular of the models that are provided. Okay, we can go down next. Okay, and um, some people were interested in the power generator. This, this of course, is uh, actually they have, these are portable uh, biomass power generators. You know, they may sit for six months in one spot. You know, if you could connect to three-phase electricity had an area, you could actually uh, utilize one of these as long as you had uh, sustained product to feed it. You know, so 
So, um, but some people were interested in this possibility. Uh, again, uh, I'm not trying to sell air burners, but they're the ones that are kind of the chief producers of these machines. Um, and this one also would require an excavator front end loader for loading the material. Uh, you've got 100, 500 kilowatt or the one megawatt machine. Um, just for the 100 kilowatt though, you need $840,000, uh, not cheap. Uh, but, you know, it could be a possibility in Weaverville, you know, and the idea is to have a predictable, sustainable supply. So that interests people. Um, now, the trench burner, this one's located as well at the Bruce Guard Station. Um, it's located right behind our other burner. This is owned by a, a local uh, contractor. And um, you need a trench. The trench serves as the air box, as the box, the same as it does in um, the fire boxes. Uh, it's fairly cheap. It's easily, you know, it's another mobile uh, machine, but found that that trench, um, you, you have to have almost clay-like soil devoid of roots, gravel, loose rock to maintain uh, the curtain effect. Um, it does, uh, it, it works real well, but what we found is the gravelly soils kept collapsing on the material and it would create smoke. It wasn't as bad as burning a pile with the same amount of material, um, but it wasn't as good as using the firebox. So um, we, we figured that it may have application uh, and we can rent this from the local contractor for just taking along and using it as a large blower when we're burning landing piles. Um, so there might be an advantage, but you know, the NEPA would have to address digging the trenches and such. So we're thinking of just using it like a giant leaf blower. Um, but again, these uh, people use them. Uh, I believe they, the price there is around 42000 starting out, you bought one brand new. Uh, it, it runs the same motor uh, essentially as the air curtain burner, the, the larger firebox that we have here at Roos. So um, the other thing about having a trench, you have to make sure that it's barricaded off in the evening when you're done, you know, to meet all the OSHA standards and things of that nature. But it is a, it's another option. Okay, next. Okay, this is uh, just to give you an idea of loading these machines. This this is a machine we're loading it up. Um, they're in paradise. Uh, it's getting ready for its trip to Ruth. And what we did is uh, we brought over a series of about a group of five small logs and used that as rollers to uh, put it up on the low bed. Next. Okay, here again, I get a, a bigger sense of it. Uh, and again, the machine is, uh, it's just, it's around 30 feet long. It weighs about the same as our dozer does. Uh, it was easy to haul, easy to tie down, very stable. Um, so it takes, the, the main thing to the takeaway of this is when you're loading and unloading, um, just the loading operation alone is a good solid hour, the same with unloading. So that's always a consideration. Um, some of these companies make specific trucks uh, with a cable and hoist system where you can just roll on and roll off just like you do garbage containers and um, you know any kind of operation like that. So they, uh, you can purchase that, but that would require purchasing a truck specific for this job. Um, it works fine what we're using it for though, just using um, our dozer to load and unload. 
Next. Okay, here's an operation here. Uh, this is from the Mad Gap Timber Sale. This is just south of the Roos Guard Station. Um, and here we're using a uh, our nursery tractor. We bought a, a rake, specific a grapple rake. Okay, so this is, you saw the previous picture of that large landing pile. Um, and this is what it looks like afterwards. Um, the only reason there's even a mound there is because that was an old stump from probably 30 years ago. But that's it. Uh, it's beautiful for cleaning landings. Okay, next. Okay, this is, uh, this is how we do it every morning, preparing the box uh, for ignition in the morning, real dry material. Uh, like I say, most of the time there's hot ash. It's only after the weekend that we come in here and really build it up like this. Um, and uh, again, now you can see these refractory uh, ceramic walls. Uh, they're heavy duty and um, you cannot spray any water on them. And you can see the bottom there, the floor, which is essentially ash. That's probably, you know, two weeks of burning right there. We haven't cleaned it out. So, um, you know, it looks pretty good. You could, you know, we'll get into it later, but you could actually have a special rake for biochar for this. Next. Okay, here it is. Uh, this was during our demonstration project, our dozer operator uh, loading material. Uh, this is from the first 48 project. And uh, again, the whole emphasis, you guys, uh, all you can see is the heat wave there. And when he, every time he loads, he breaks what we call the air curtain and you'll get a small amount of smoke coming up and then it will close up again. Um, and now we, we keep a water tender on site. We've ordered a set of sprinkler systems so we can continue burning. Uh, we don't get too many firebrand escapes. If we do, it's uh, real close to the, the burn box, but it's something you gotta consider. Next. These are just a couple of ideas, uh, you know, the, the open curtain burning versus the open pile burning. Um, obviously, uh, we would not be pile burning this time of year. So if you, if you have an air curtain, you could probably burn another two, two months or more, um, depending on weather and such. I do know Cal Fire is going to, I believe, they're playing on shutting down burning uh, June 29th. Uh, so your emissions reduced by 80% and we're talking the greenhouse gases and the particulate matter. Uh, your better, much better consumption, 98% um, plus. Again, going back to that 100 tons of burning and getting two tons remaining of ash. Um, and here we just, this is the biggest thing, and these just were off top of the head here. We can burn under hotter, drier conditions. Um, and if we're burning away from an administrative site, we would require a burn plan. Uh, you always need to have some kind of contingency. Uh, I, I'm fairly sure we'll be asked to terminate operations as soon as fire danger rating goes too high. Right now, our fire danger rating is moderate, so we can continue burning on, at this administrative site. Um, we can, it, it appears that we'll be able to burn during limited operating periods, like for the Northern Spotted Owl, if, we're, if it's approved in consultation and addressed in our NEPA. So that's a plus for us, um, because probably 
80% of our projects are shut down during the limited operating uh, period from generally uh, early February uh, until fall for uh, Northern Spotted Owl smoke disturbance. Um, you can burn right in the community uh, by sensitive areas or class one air sheds um, as approved by air quality. Uh, we would like to get Deborah out to see this um, and involve her in this. It, it's new for uh, our air quality district. So we want to involve them if we should decide to move, uh, burn next to a, say a clinic. Uh, I'm pretty sure they would approve this. Um, and again, you know, we can burn on no burn days uh, if approved by air quality. Uh, it certainly gives you a lot of leverage. Um, and then for burning larger piles, you know, you throw them in there and you're done. Where I've gone back on landing piles a week later and you'll still see smoldering. So that's a big benefit. Um, typically, we've only got one to two people for the burner uh, or even less, you know, open pile burning, you have a three person minimum and <clears throat> usually there's apparatus as well. Excuse me. Um, the air curtain uh, will burn all material much more efficiently. Like we talked about, 98% of your material gets burned. <clears throat> Reduced risk of fire spread, fire brand escape. Uh, and your soil damage from pile burning, you won't have all these black spots all over. It's all just put in the box. So, you know, you're any, pretty much you're burning on top of a road bed or a landing bed. And the other thing that's kind of big uh, when with landing pile burning, we almost always burn some kind of residual tree adjacent to a landing. It can't be, you know, short of cutting down more trees around the landing, you usually do some kind of scorch. So it, that's another advantage to this. Okay, next. Okay, real quickly, uh, fa factors that we're finding affecting the production, um, your fuel moisture, if it's too wet, getting, say, above 20%, um, especially the larger fuels, it, it slows our production down, um, and we're, we find the need that we got to get drier fuel to mix in with it. Now we have the opposite problem. If it burns too dry, uh, then it gets pretty hot and um, we actually start getting some flames out of the air curtain and we have to slow down uh, loading it. Our fuel size, obviously, when you're putting large logs, um, you know, say 12, 16 inch or greater, it starts slowing down. So if you're gonna do that, you wanna make sure you have some smaller material to burn with that. Um, Obviously, the species of fuel, you know, we're finding our conifers burn a lot quicker. And this is true of pile burning, open pile burning, uh, than your hardwoods. Um, the soil, fortunately, we are using a rake, uh, a grapple rake. So, uh, but if you get soil in there, that will definitely start affecting the effectiveness. Um, it'll start smoldering and burning real slow. Uh, and then the other thing is the location of the fuel relative to the location of the firebox. So in other words, if you're, if you're running that excavator, you know, 100 feet to grab a pile and then bring it back to the box, that's gonna slow you down. So you wanna keep the box close to your material. Um, and we're doing that since we're depositing everything here by a dumb truck. But that's not the ideal situation. Ideally, you would move this from, in our case, landing to landing. Um, and the other thing, just speaking of production, uh, since May, uh, since we had our demonstration, which was May 6, we've consumed uh, 295 tons of slash and uh, treated 67 acres 
of fuel around the race area. So usually uh, if we're done, most of our burning is completed by the end of May and it's kind of refreshing that we can continue on right now uh, without worry of escape. Okay, next. Here's a picture of the trench burner. Uh, again, we tried that earlier. I believe this was uh, March, April. Um, it didn't take long to build a trench. It's pretty quick. It's easy to set up. Uh, small fuel consumption, you know, two gallons per hour. Like I say, very similar motor that's, that's what's in the larger box burner. Um, but again, uh, keeping that trench to make an effective curtain is really tough. Uh, this was a really gravelly, rocky soil, not the type of soil that you would want to use one of these in. But we just wanted to show this to you as a demonstration. Um, and you can see all the fuel. We burned, we burned, I don't know, quite a bit with this. We probably spent two weeks burning, uh, probably three acres, four acres worth of fuel, but uh, it was tough achieving that fire, you know, the air curtain effect. So um, it was worth a try. Next. Again, here's the trench burn, burner again. Um, it just wasn't near as fast as what we were hoping. And I think it was because we were, we were fighting, trying to get that, that air curtain effect. Uh, in the end, you can't see it, but across, you can, one thing that's interesting with this, if you look at the burner itself, you'll see the manifold where the air is angled down and across the trench. And that's the same, same thing as, what's going on in the fire box, uh, the air curtain uh, that we're use, utilizing now. Uh, but you can see the gravel kept uh, collapsing in on the material. So that really um, kind of disrupted the air curtain. Next. Okay, so here's other uses. Uh, you know, the biomass energy that, you know, <clears throat> we explored looking at that, those larger units. Um, the air curtain, uh, the company that made this box, they are, they, um, they're based out of Florida and uh, originally designing for uh, hurricane cleanup. And now they're, they're moving to the west. And those smaller units that are pulled on a trailer are fairly popular uh, in New Mexico, Arizona. I've seen them out there. Um, here you can see um, our law enforcement depositing um, illegal marijuana into the burn. It's done over with. In the past, we've had to dig a trench to bury it. Uh, no more. It burns in two seconds. You don't even smell it. It's quick. Uh, and last but not least, um, this is something I know the watershed will be exploring, uh, and Dylan might want to talk about it here when I'm done. Is uh, the it's the the ash, uh, the resultant ash can be used for soil remediation, uh, the biochar. I know when we were exploring the biochar, you have to be set up for it. It doesn't seem like it's too big a deal. Um, it sells for $120 per cubic yard. So something to explore in the future. Uh, next. This is just uh, the specs. Uh, if you guys want to look at these later between the three, the three burners that might be useful in our area, the Air Curtain S220, which is here in Roos. Uh, the burn boss, the one on the trailer, that is just a miniature version of the S220. Um, and, and if you look at the fuel consumed between the three and then the last is a trench burner. 
uh, basically the same same setup as the air curtain um, only again it's something you can pull with pickup truck uh, but this PowerPoint will be available um, and you can get on the air air burner incorporated to look at these specifications if you're interested uh, next Okay, here's uh, the picture you can see. This was, uh, I think, last Tuesday, uh, this week. We were burning uh, outside. We had a barbecue for one of our operators. Uh, you can see on the left, the barbecue at the Ruth Guard Station. Uh, this was for, he's getting married uh, this week, so we had a little barbecue for him. You can see our barbecue produced more smoke than our air curtain burner on the right. Uh, that day it was 98 degrees outside and an RH at 22 degrees. So you can see the difference right there. Pretty effective for smoke reduction. Next. Okay, these are just some things to consider um, is when you're burning under hot conditions like we are now, uh, you need to follow the burn plan if you have one and the, and the prescription parameters. Uh, again, as I said before, we're burning an administrative site, so we don't have the strict per parameters. Um, you need to think, you need to have a plan in place uh, you can't as assume that you're not going to have a potential escape. You have to plan like you would a pile burn. Um, so here you see we have a porta tank set up with a pump, um, and we have a water tender at the station that pre-treated the area, and um, and he does that every so many hours. We'll run and, and pre-treat, or even every hour as needed. Um, you have to consider uh, your staffing. Do you have firefighter resources? Is, are there existing fires? Um, so if so, we have to shut it down. We have people trained to shut this burner down in the event we do have a fire. And um, so that these are all critical things you have to think about if you're gonna set one of these up as it's starting to dry out. Um, and again, what is the current predicted fire danger rating? I'm fairly certain by the middle of next month, we'll be asked to terminate operations, uh, if not earlier, depending on, um, you know, what our, the trends and weather go. Uh, and then just, just lastly, uh, the air curtain versus traditional burning. Uh, this is for you folks to think about, you know, what are, what are the objectives here? Uh, pile burning, or you want to do some actual, you know, understory burning and some actual landscape ecosystem management. You know, this is just another tool. Uh, it's not a panacea. It's just a, another tool that we're adding um, to the, the the giant toolbox that we have. Um, and you got to think about the cost versus benefit. Um, so uh, this is just a short overview, and I appreciate. Uh, the time to present this.